Hey guys, it's Alex with the Artifact Company coming to you again today, July 11th, 2023. And I've got some something really cool to show you guys. All right. So this was recently sent in by a uh, well-known auction house. Five Libyan middle to upper Acheulean quartzite hand axes, ex Frederick Schultz. Frederick Schultz was a uh, ancient art dealer out of New York City. And there's an, another invoice here. It says uh, five quartzite hand axes found at Sabha, Libya, middle to upper Acheulean. List them. Uh, the various links on here and also says Provenance Celtic and Prehistoric Museum Dingle Ireland acquired in 1989 and sold with an export license from the Republic of Ireland and there's some other information on here that I cannot disclose now let's check these things out so here's the first one this is somewhere in the neighborhood of 250,000 years old. Okay, this is a Paleolithic tool actually not made by Homo sapiens. This is made by earlier species throughout Africa, Europe. You know, Neanderthals were found to have these, Homo erectus, some other, other species utilize this technology. Paranthropus, I think, also. Uh, these are unique because this was one of the first fairly refined methods of flint napping. You can see still how thick this is through the base. This is a hand axe, okay? So these guys would take this and they would dig into the ground. Sometimes these are found with extreme polish at one end, or they'd use them for chipping into... Um, leg bones of animals to get out marrow, whole host of, of tool of uh, functions that this particular tool could use. Now, where do these things get found? Okay, and this is gonna be kind of a different, different video than most. So, let's see if I can find a pen here. Okay, so most of these items are found out in the desert, on what's called the desert pavement. And that is a layer of rocks and gravel and larger pieces of grit that has settled out at the bottom. And over time, the sand dunes move across the landscape and this sand that comes across and the wind that carries it will actually polish the surface of these and I don't, you can't really see you can see this slight gloss that's on here the edges are very smooth all the way around the piece because of this um, use and the wind and what ends up happening is, is this wind carries these little fine grits of sand that these pieces, when they're exposed on the desert pavement, the sand runs across the surface relatively slowly, but very similar to what you'd see in like a river polished piece, okay? Now, the other thing that sets this apart and how we can tell that these come out of a, a desertic environment is this, the secondary surface mineralization. You can kind of see it around here. It's kind of a beige, mauve, you know, pink, kind of buff colored surface accumulation that's what's called desert varnish and what that is is that's clay powdered clay that gets picked up by the wind and it impacts the surface of the tool and then it adheres to the tool so let's take a look at some of these other examples here's another one it's got quite a bit of polish on it more so than this one Still some desert varnish accumulation in here. You can kind of make out the stippled appearance of this. These, these pieces are made out of a quartzite, so there will be some differential weathering that we can get into under the microscope. This one 
has got a, a ton of weathering to it. The surface is pitted, much larger than you'd even see on a, a North American river find. Another excellent example showing all of the key things about what's called tripolitic weathering. And with tripolitic weathering, sometimes you can even determine the prevailing wind pattern if a piece has been found in situ um, long enough. All right. So there's the five Acheulean Paleolithic tools. Some of the oldest things that we've examined in the office over the years all come from Africa, occasionally Europe. Now the other piece that was sent in, I'll take these off the screen here, and I'll post pictures of these other these other five pieces, a uh, little better ones on the screen shortly, is this. This is an Egyptian provenanced hand axe. It's a little bit different from the others, you can tell. It's not quite as, doesn't have this typical teardrop shape. The wind polish and desert varnish is not quite as heavy. And you can see there is some damage exposing uh, the original stone underneath. This one is flint, the others are quartzite. All right, well, let's take them to the microscope. Hey guys, it's July 11th, 2023. This is Alex with the Artifact Company in Jackson Galleries, and we're going to talk about these uh, wonderful middle to upper Paleolithic pieces that came in that we just reviewed in the photo room. If you're curious about learning more about uh, old world artifacts, highly recommend this book, The Old Stone Age by Francis. Lords, he. This is an older book. There'll be a link to where you can probably get this uh, in our things. Came out in 1968. Uh, this copy is from 1970, and he has this other one, Tools of the Old and New Stone Age. Goes over uh, exactly how we've determined that these tools are that old. Uh, the different layers that have been dated where these things are found, along with some of the some of the different uh, issues with that. Now, this book came out in 1959, actually. So this is a, an even this is a newer reprint. This is also an excellent book if you're a student of flint napping or uh, artifact collecting in general. This is called Experimental Determinations of Stone Tool Uses. So it goes into all of those experiments. Some of you are familiar with the elephant experiment where they took a small knife uh, or flake uh, blade rather and actually tested it out to how well does it work to skin an elephant. And this goes into some details about how we can tell when something's been used for digging. Uh, this is actually a hand axe page. Here's some other ones. How, how they're what happens to the pieces when they're used for breaking bones, various various things like that. And it goes into actually some of the experimentation where they duplicate what has been found in the archaeological record. So just some information for you. Okay. The first one we're going to examine is this one. This is the whitish, kind of yellow and brown banded one. Should be able to see the quartzite very easily in the screen. So we can see the individual quartzite grains on this surface in 
a somewhat yellowed matrix. This accumulation here along this edge, you can see that this is sitting on top of the quartzite. This is some of the desert varnish that I referred to earlier. Sometimes this form can be called silcrete because it hardens up very, 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 very hard. You can see the Here's a good shot of the differential weathering. You can see the individual sand grains. Some of them have been weathered faster because they were made of softer material than the matrix itself, leaving behind this pitted appearance. Here are some of the sand grains. This quartzite would better be called, because of the rounded appearance of, the, of these um, grains, as a silicified sandstone similar to Hickston. Again, some more Aeolian deposits on the surface of this piece. Now we're down at the tip, the bit. Got a chip here, but can you see how rounded over this is? Smoothed and polished over its entirety. Not a modern tooling mark or appearance of any sort of artificial coating. It's a little bit of pencil mark right there. Looks like someone may have traced this. Exceptional example, getting a COA. There's the second one. considerably weathered example, very heavily polished. One little fresh ding right there. Incredible weather in there. Sorry about that, guys. Sometimes you got to answer the phone. Back to this uh, second hand axe. You see some impacted desert varnish down in this location. tooling on this at all. Put a polish along that edge. That's, that's just exceptional. And just, just that one little fresher flake there. Alright. Third one. This is the one that's extremely heavily weathered.
impacted decay product there. Excellent differential weathering. You can see this stipple pattern. Not a sulfide to be found, which is always good when your rules of thumb follow through. Insect uh, dropping. This has been on somebody's shelf for a long time. The internet, excellent, excellent example. Here's the fourth one. Guy right here. Mm -hmm. One slightly fresher chip here. No secondary weathering that may have been damaged after it was found. Heavy, heavy polish. Impacted desert varnish there and there. More impacted desert varnish there. Just absolutely textbook. Base. Looks 
excellent desert varnish there. Virtual weathering pattern. Yeah, it's like a stipple pattern. flattened chisel tip at the end is kind of indicative of one that was used for breaking bones open or processing harder items. Alright, fantastic. And now we'll look at the Egyptian Peace. So this one does not appear to have near the tripolitic weathering that the other examples did because this one did probably did not come from a particular particularly desert region. It may have come from closer to the river somewhere. Yeah, we've got we've got dendrites forming on the surface here, the secondary mineralization that we see in the from the desert and from along the Nile. Some dissolution of this surface. It's actually eroded away. Here are the, the fresher flake that we pointed out earlier, showing the level of patina formation on this flint and the depth of it. This yellowish rind. A little bit of desert varnish on there. This one's of a slightly different design than the other, so it's probably a, a slightly newer, slightly younger would be my guess. at one time. This is, this is, uh, looks like black paint. Probably was in a, uh, a professional mount. Let's check the other side. See if there's some black paint transfer over there also. Yeah, okay. So sometimes those display mounts that you'll see pieces mounted on, it's usually a black painted wire. This piece was probably held on a stand like this, with my fingers being the wire, you know, with the base resting on it. Usually a very tasteful way to display items like this. We even have some, even have some black, uh, like some black paint transfer here on the back side of the piece. Yeah, that's black paint. Um, where it contacted, probably a third point of contact with that mount. Excellent piece get a uh, COA as well. Alright guys, so these pieces were sent in by everything but the house. They're a uh, estate auction house up in Cincinnati. Uh, they will be available through their website. I'll put a link in the description to it. It's pretty easy. EBTH.com It's a uh, pleasure to work with them and to get the opportunity to handle these uh, older specimens. Alright, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed the video.